What's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV and in this video we're going to take a look at Rivian's R1T, their pickup truck that they unveiled last month in November and compare it to the most popular pickup truck, the best selling pickup truck in the US, which is the Ford F-150. In fact, last year in 2017, the F-150 sold 900,000 units. And by a factor of nearly two, they outsold the second best selling pickup truck, the Chevrolet Silverado. I want to take a look at some of the specs of the Ford F-150 and see how it matches up to the Rivian R1. T. So let's go ahead and dive in. We're going to cover 10 topics in this video. Powertrain, horsepower, torque, 0 to 60 times, towing, payload, range, bed length, height, pass-through, frunk, and 10th water fording. We'll go ahead and talk about powertrain, horsepower, and torque. Now, there are so many variants of the Ford F-150. This was really, really tricky to me. I probably spent too much time taking a look at this. There's so many options for the Ford F-150, and it's, it's a bit confusing. So what I decided to do is take one of the most popular powertrains, the EcoBoost, and there's a couple of different sizes of the engine. So you've got the 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6, and that's the uh, two-wheel drive. You've got the 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6 four-wheel drive, or four by four, and that one I think is the most popular truck, and you'll see why here in just a moment. And then this last one, the 3.5 liter high output, that's actually the Ford Raptor. So uh, with with the lowest end, and, and, and I guess I'll, I'll also add that they do have some, some diesel variants of the Ford F-150, but I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the EcoBoost because it just seems to be a really awesome engine. So with the 2.7 liter, it's 325 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque. With the 3.5 liter EcoBoost, it's 375 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. And then the Raptor is just a beast at 450 horsepower and 510 pound-feet of torque. What about the Rivian R1T? Let's take a look at that. Now, if you're new to electric vehicles, this is just a different way of measuring the powertrain here. Since it is an electric vehicle, it's measured by the size of the battery, and that's 105 kilowatt hours, 135 kilowatt hours, and 180 kilowatt hours. And, and all three of these variants are quad motor, which means that they've got an electric motor tied to each of the four wheels, which makes it all wheel drive. So the smallest battery pack, the 105 kilowatt hour, gives you 402 horsepower. And with the torque here, um, I had to actually, I put, a, I put an asterisk here because I had a really difficult time feeling confident about the pound feet of torque when I used a calculator online. It was coming up with like 10,000 pound feet of torque and that just didn't sound right to me. And so I, I reached out to a couple of people, one being Rivian, two being uh, another YouTuber that I felt pretty confident might know the answer, but I did not hear back from them at the time of this recording. So I'm just gonna put an asterisk there. This is what Rivian is communicating on their website. They're communicating in Newton meters and, uh, and, and all three are 14,000 Newton meters of torque, which I think is still really, really impressive. So um, on to the second one, the 135 kilowatt hours, 753 horsepower, 180 kilowatt hour gives you 700 horsepower. So that middle one is going to give you the best horsepower, and you'll see here in just a second, a really impressive zero to 60 time. So for the, uh, for the lower end, uh, 2.7 liter F-150, you've got zero to 60 in 5.7 seconds, which is actually really, really impressive. Uh, the 3.5 liter, 6.6 .6 seconds, and then the, uh, the Ford Raptor, the 3.5 liter high output is 5.3 seconds. I think that's probably the quickest pickup truck stock that's on the market right now. I may be wrong, and in fact, if, if you guys follow pickup trucks a little bit closer than I do, uh, put it in the comments down below. Is there another pickup truck that comes stock that's quicker than uh, the Ford Raptor at 5.3 seconds to zero to 60? Uh, Rivian R1T. So we've got 4.9 seconds, three seconds, and 3.2 seconds. So again, your 135 kilowatt hour battery pack is going to be the quickest 
one of the three variants. But all three variants are actually quicker than the Ford F-150 in every single category. Now I've seen a few comments on one of my other EV truck videos saying that zero to 60 time does not matter with the pickup truck, but I think that it will start to matter for people. The reason why it's not important and why it's not marketed by manufacturers is because pickup trucks traditionally are really slow. This is going to change with the electric powertrain, and you can see here with the numbers that I just covered that all three variants of Rivian's pickup truck will be sub four seconds. This pickup truck will actually be quicker than my 2013 Model S, which does zero to 60 in 5.3 seconds. So what I think is going to happen with this electric powertrain in a pickup truck is that it's gonna create this entirely new subculture of people who drive these pickup tr electric pickup pickup trucks that just smoke almost anything and everything off the line that's on the streets. All right, we are rolling into towing here. What's the towing capacity of the F-150 and the Rivian R1T? Let's take a look. At its lowest level, it's 9,100 pounds for the 2.7 liter. Then you get into the 3.5 liter beast at 13,200 pounds. This is class leading at the moment. And then the uh, 3.5 liter high output uh, comes in at 8,000 pounds. What about the R1T? Well, for all three variants, it's 11,023 pounds. So I think for the meantime, that F-150 will still hold the record for best in class towing capacity. However, the R1T is right up there with most of the gasoline pickup truck competitors. What about payload? Let's go ahead and take a look at that one. So for the 2.7 liter F-150, it's 2,470 pounds. Then going down the list here, it's 3,230 pounds. And then lastly, 1,200 pounds for the Ford Raptor and across the board for the R1T it's 1,764 pounds. I like what they're doing here it makes it really simple I think for manufacturing and ordering of this R1T which I think is important for them as a new car company. Let's go ahead and take a look at the range. So with the uh, 2.7 liter it's 572 miles so I'll just stop to take a quick moment to say that the, uh, the, the, the tank size for the F-150 is at the 26 gallon. There was an, uh, an option to upgrade it to a larger gas tank, but I went with the standard one. All right, so the 2.7 liter, 572 miles, 3.5 liter, 494, and then that Raptor gets you 416 miles. And with the R1T, you've got the 105 kilowatt hour will get you 230 plus miles. The 235 kilowatt hour will get you 300 plus. And then the 180, the big whopper, gets you 400 plus miles of range. Bed length, this is another one that a lot of people were really curious about. So the 2.7 liter, 78 inches, same thing for the 3.5 liter, and then the Ford Raptor, 67 inches. How does that compare to the R1T? Well, it's the same bed length for every single variant, and that's uh, 55.12 inches. How does the height stack up? 77.2, 77.2, and 78 for the Ford F-150 and the R1T, all at 71.4 inches. All right, so let's talk about something that's really unique to the R1T, which is the pass-through. They call it a gear tunnel, but it's additional storage, aside from the bed of the pickup truck that you'll be able to put gear in or stuff and close it up and lock it and know that it's actually safe. The pass-through for the R1T is going to give you 350 liters or added another uh, measurement here of 92 gallons. And it looks like it runs pretty much the width of the pickup truck. It's fully enclosed and locked. And so it will be nice to be able to put something in there knowing that it's not going to get stolen, like you might have to be concerned about if you put something in the bed of a pickup truck. And when they demonstrated this on the reveal night in LA last month, it was pretty cool because uh, on both sides, there were these doors that kind of folded down. Of course, they pulled out like a, I think they pulled out a, a small surfboard and a few duffel bags and things like that. And then you could actually sit on those doors and stand up on them to get to the roof of the truck. So really, really versatile. Not only do you get that 
extra storage of 350 liters, but you also get a place that you can sit down, maybe put your gear, your snowboard boots on, or change your clothes. And another one that the R1T here does absolutely win and have an advantage for is another place for storage, which is the massive Frunk. It comes in at 330 liters or 87 gallons and because you have that electric powertrain in the floorboard of the pickup truck, you have more storage in the front. So you can pop that front trunk and where there would normally be an engine for a gasoline car, you've got more storage. Even though the bed of the pickup truck is not as big as the F-150, if you want a place to store things that you know are going to be safe, that gear pass-through and the frunk really, really are going to come in handy. All right, what about water fording depth? If you're someone who likes to take their vehicle off-road, this one is going to be really interesting to you because since the R1T does not need an air intake like the gasoline engine, you're going to get an advantage here. And the R1T is going to give you 39 inches or one meter of water fording depth, which is basically about halfway up the truck. And that is really, really impressive. And I'm gonna guess to say that because of the weight of the truck as well, you're going to have some significant advantages there with fording through water. So let's go ahead and take a look at the 10 categories that we just covered and see which vehicle one each category. So by far the R1T handily wins the horsepower and torque category. It's a no contest there. Zero to 60 time, R1T takes the cake for that one as well, no contest. Towing here, this is sort of split down the middle in my opinion. You've got the 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6 4x4 option that is best in class at 13,200 pounds, but the R1T is not too far away from that with the 11,023 pounds. So we're going to give that one a tie between the F-150 and the R1T. What about payload? I think the F-150 wins this payload one simply because the R1T just has a small bed. Range, the gasoline is the winner in this one, and hopefully the electric variants will be able to improve their range over the next five to ten years. What about bed length? F-150 wins this one. However, I will mention that if you lay the R1T's tailgate down, it is a lot more comparable to the Ford F-150, but I guess if you lay the F-150's tailgate down, then that gets a little bit longer too. How about height? I think this one is really, really close. In fact, if you raise the suspension of the R1T, it's going to give it another let's say three inches, which puts it pretty close to the F-150. Now the one interesting thing about the R1T's height is that it looks like it will most likely come with air suspension, which means that it will raise and lower. So when you're out on the trail and you need more ground clearance, you'll be able to raise that to its maximum. And it looks like the difference between the max and the minimum height difference in that R1T air suspension is going to be about seven inches. Now, I don't know if that's going to be a standard feature, like if you buy the bare bones R1T, is air suspension going to come with it? I guess we'll just have to wait and see, but that definitely is a plus or an advantage that it has over the F-150 because, as I understand it, it's a static suspension, whereas the R1T will have a dynamic suspension, which is definitely super cool. What about pass-through? Well, since the F-150 doesn't have a pass-through, then the R1T obviously wins here. And then the frunk, no contest. R1T is the winner for this one since there is no frunk in the F-150. Water fording depth, that one goes to the R1T as well. So I hope you found this video really helpful and interesting. I personally was very curious after attending the product reveal for the R1T last month to learn how it compared and stacked up to the F-150. So I think there's some areas of opportunity for future iterations of this truck. And who knows, maybe Tesla's pickup truck will be even more competitive than the R1T. We'll just have to wait and see.
I'm crossing my fingers that in addition to the Model Y that they reveal in March, that they also show off that pickup truck. That's my prediction at least, and if I was a betting man, I probably would put some money on it that they are going to show off that pickup truck at the same time as the Model Y reveal, but that's a separate video. So thank you for taking time to watch this video. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. If you're a regular, hit that like button, and I will see you on the next video.